All right, let's take a look at this spreadsheet. We're going to use this to discuss closing entries. Now, we're going to assume we have this adjusted trial balance for our business over here. Okay, so we've already um, performed all our entries for the month um, or the year. You know, it's whatever time period you want to assume. We'll assume it's a month. And um, we've got this, these balance sheet accounts. You know, you can see up top. Looks like we're a corporation because there's a dividends account and div 1400 of dividends um, were declared. Since I don't see any dividends paid, uh, we can tell they also were paid. Okay, and then there was consulting revenues and some expenses. So with closing entries, keep in mind there's always four of them. And we use a temporary account called income summary. And I've listed it here. It has no balance. Um, we use that temporary account to close off the revenue and the expenses to retained earnings. Okay, and, and it's just used temporary on a temporary basis. So the first entry we want to do is close off revenues. And the reason why we're doing closing entries is we need to eliminate the temporary accounts um, so that we can start again in the next period. Now temporary accounts are usually uh, the revenues and expense accounts, but there is one temporary account on the balance sheet, that's the dividends account. Okay, the permanent accounts are the balance sheet accounts. So the first thing we're going to do is this entry right here. We're going to close out the income to income summary. So I've got consulting revenues of 26,000. So I'm going to debit 26,000. Uh, if I can type it in right. And credit income summary. And that's our first entry. Now when we do that, of course, if we were looking at the T account for consulting revenue, it would then go to zero, right? We had a credit balance. Now it's got 26000 that we'll post to it as a debit, so it now has a zero balance. We've transferred the balance in consulting revenues to income summary. All right, the next entry we need to close out are the expenses. Okay, so the expenses we had all have debit balance, so we need to credit, you know, the payroll, the interest expense and the office supplies and of course you close out all of the expenses the total of that go is a debit to income summary okay now let's go ahead and post these at this point so we can see what happens the first income summary is a credit of twenty six thousand right came from that entry again this is a T account so this is supposed to represent our ledger account the second one is a debit of 24,100. So now I've got an income summary balance. By the way, at this point now, with uh, consulting revenues equals zero, the payroll, all the expenses now equals zero too, right? We had debits of 19.5, 3.5, and 1.5. That's in thousands of dollars. And now we've credited for the same amount. So they'll show zero in their T accounts. I'm not going to illustrate that, but they will. But what we know is I've got a $1,900 credit in income summary. When that's the case, that's the income you had for the period. After you've, after you've closed out your revenues and expenses, the balance and income summary is your net income or net loss. If it's a credit, it's income. If it's got a debit balance, it's a net loss. Okay, then the third closing entry we make would be to close income summary to retained earnings. Now, here I've said owner's capital because I originally created this assuming... Um, this was an individual proprietorship, but for a corporation that would be close it to retained earnings. So I had 1900 in income summary. I need to close that out so it equals zero. Okay, so now I've got another debit to 1900, and as soon as I put that in, my income summary has a zero balance. Now you may say, well, that's silly. Why don't we close both of those to retained earnings? Well, you can do that. That's certainly permitted. You don't need to use the income summary. Uh, account, um, uh, but it is a nice tool for letting you accumulate all the revenue and expense accounts and calculate net income before you uh, get it to retained earnings. And I actually think most computerized systems don't use income summary anymore. Uh, they post it on the fly, if you will, to uh, retained earnings. So uh, it's useful, but not required. And then the last entry we need to close out is that dividends account. Now, dividends aren't 
part of income so we don't close them to income summary. Dividends represent the distribution of earnings to the owners. So if I eliminate this, my last entry then would be to credit dividends for $1,400. Okay, and that removes dividends and then debit retained earnings for the same amount. Okay, and now when I'm done with that, I can post all those entries to retained earnings. Now let me just slide down and show you what that would look like. Okay, so retained earnings had a beginning balance. Let me put in the beginning balance of 17148 and then we've made one entry closing um, or actually two entries one posting income to it so we get the 1900 credit to retained earnings and then the 1400 debit to retained earnings and as a result retained earnings has a balance of 17648 in this example Okay, so the important point to point out, closing entries, there's four of them to make. Close in, you close the revenue accounts, you close the expense accounts, you close the income summary, and you close the withdrawing accounts. And when you do that, you're done with your closing entries.